Please stop. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different than my usual content. Uh, I've made god guides in the past before, um, but typically they're quite highly edited, condensed, a little bit more beginner friendly, I guess. Uh, but today I'm going to be doing a god guide for King Arthur, where I'm going to go a little bit more personal with it, a little bit more in depth with it, just hanging out in jungle practice. I can cover a lot more in this style of a video, because I don't have to do time like editing and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like uh, you can suggest in the comments whether you like this kind of guide format. Uh, I feel like I can go more in depth with it, with it, but it won't be as like fancily edited and all that stuff like my usual videos are. So let me know if you prefer this to like a standard kind of like guide format that I would normally do. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right in. So King Arthur, he's a warrior in Smite. He's a stand switching warrior. He has uh, two different stances, the blue stance and the orange stance, which from here on out in the video, uh, I'll be using the notation 4A and 4B, for example, for his ultimate. So the A abilities are the blue ones, the B abilities are the... Uh, Combo stance, orange ones, just to make things a little bit easier. So, like, if I cast this ability, that is his 1A. And if I cast this ability, that is his 3B. So, I'm, that's the notation I'm going to be using just to keep things uh, concise for the rest of the guide. And so, yeah, let's just kick things off with his abilities. So, essentially, uh, Arthur's passive. He has a mechanic where he generates energy, which is going to be tied to his ultimate. And uh, this stacks up four times. It gives him damage mitigation, 1% per stack. And also bonus energy gain per stack as well. 20% uh, per stack, so you get 80% bonus energy gain, or 180% of what you would originally get if you have this at max stacks. Uh, you hit gods with your abilities to stack this up, and it lasts 15 seconds. So essentially, you want to always be hitting a god every 15 seconds, if possible, to uh, refresh the duration on this and make sure you don't lose those stacks, because it's a big benefit, this passive. It goes very underutilized, and uh, not necessarily underutilized, but uh, underappreciated when you're playing Arthur. That bonus energy gain is really huge and allows you to get out some of the insane, like, 15 second cooldown ultimates that you see on, on, on King Arthur's when they're playing the game. So uh, there is a little attack speed conversion thing because uh, King Arthur does not benefit from any attack speed in any way and item passives that interact with his basic attacks won't trigger. Uh, and so for that, he gets a 33% attack speed conversion uh, that will increase his energy gain. It's not worth um, building attack speed for uh, at all. Uh, if you weren't going to build an item with attack speed anyway, it's not worth building it just to try and get a little bit of extra energy gain. That's trolling in my opinion. Uh, so don't have, you'd have to worry about that really. Uh, but moving into his first ability, we have Overhead Slash, which is his 1A. This is a line damage ability. Pretty good range on it. And um, if you're closer to the start, you can see that... Oh, one more thing to note quickly. Uh, all of Arthur's abilities are going to be on instant cast. You can't change this. You're just going to have to get used to it. Uh, if you already play the game on instant or quick cast, like myself, I play everything on quick cast, which is where you press the key and then you hold it in and you can still target it and uh, move it. And then when you release the key, it casts. So you, you just like quickly press and release to basically be on instant casting. So I'm very used to this. You might not be if uh, you don't typically play on quick or instant cast if you're a normal cast user. Uh, but yeah, Arthur's abilities, you, you won't like be able to hold and then like aim them. They're going to come out immediately. That's just like something that uh, makes his kit flow together a lot better. You, you can't play him without that. And so, yeah, back onto his one. So uh, you can see here, there's a little area in the front there um, where it's going to do bonus damage. It does, um, how much is it? Up to 50% bonus damage. It scales from 30 to 50 as you rank the ability. But you can see here, uh, that 207 and that 104 is the bonus damage that it's applying. So 207 and 104, if I hit him just from this range... You just see that 207. That bonus 21 is coming from Glad Shield, which I have, um, which we're going to talk about later in the build section. But yeah, that, that's his 1A. Uh, long range poke, good for minion wave clear, uh, and if you want to try and get in melee range, it's going to hit a lot harder. This ability chunks if you're in melee range. It absolutely does. It is very hard. Um, worth noting that most of Arthur's abilities hit a little bit less hard than your typical ability because he has so many of them, but this in melee range absolutely hits hard as, as most warrior abilities. As you can see there, it's doing about 300 there with one item to this uh, Odin. So, uh, yeah, moving on, we will cover his 1B, which is this uh, cone attack here, which is uh, the combo stance one. It's just a cone attack that damages and cripples. Uh, it's decent for lane clear, decent for, you know, getting your blue or whatever in solo lane. Uh, and the cripple can be very nice. Uh, you know, stops enemies from getting away, can stop certain abilities that um, are reliant on cripples, like many of King Arthur's abilities himself, actually. He's relatively weak to cripples because this, this, and this... That dash there, they're all weak to cripples. So King Arthur does uh, get countered a little bit by cripples. But this uh, this 1B here, very good for countering gods like Fenrir, you know, that rely on some kind of movement ability to get in on you and stuff like that. Very good for that. But other than that, it's just a standard, like, cleave cone. Uh, still chunks pretty hard, but not as hard as this in melee range. This this does a lot more. Uh, but yeah, still useful. Uh, good range as well. You can see here, I can, like, easily hit both these Odin bots. 
And if you want to, you can do a little bit of like a swing the target around kind of thing. So if I'm moving over here, I can just quickly like pull my camera around if uh, the enemy jukes or if I need to hit a different enemy or something. Uh, moving on, we have his 2A, which is just a simple circle damage around him that slows enemies. You can see the Odin's going a bit slower there. Uh, nothing special. Uh, this ability I mostly use to be able to like transition easily into combo stance. So say this Odin's about to jump away from me. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> we accidentally ulted him there. But say this Odin's about to jump away from me. Uh, I just hit him with this, instantly got a combo stance, and I can I can have access to my combo stance abilities. That that's what I use this ability for for the most part, but it is just a little bit of damage. Comes out very quickly, uh, activates around you, so it's almost impossible to miss. Uh, very good for just like general purpose use. The slow is nice as well for chasing people down. Uh, but moving into the 2B. Uh, this is a dash with a knock-up right at the end of the targeter. You can see there. Uh, if you hit an enemy god at any point during it, it will trigger the knock-up. So that can be a point blank range here. It's just an instant knock-up. So that, that is pretty useful. Uh, nice for interrupting people that aren't knock-up immune and channeled abilities. Or just general CC, keeping people in your abilities. You know, you can do stuff like this. Where as soon as you use this 2B, you're going to go back into a regular blue stance. So you can just do that. And that's guaranteed. Like, no one's going to be able to, like, stop that happening to them, really. Unless they pre beats the knock-up on this. And so... Pretty good for that kind of stuff. Uh, just a general, like, his his second abilities, I would say, are the weakest of them. And they're more so, like, utility focused. You just use them when you need. They're not going to be doing, like, big damage for you or anything or helping you clear the lane, really. They're, they're more so for utility. You know, you've got the knock-up, you've got the slow. Uh, and they both come out relatively quickly, especially at point blank range. This comes out basically instantly, so you can just get an on-demand knock-up whenever you need it. Moving on, though, to his third ability. Uh, in regular stance, the 3A, this is a uh, twin cleave, which is just... Simply like that. It's two hits. It looks like it's some kind of like area ability. Uh, but in reality, it's just two hits uh, that, that happen in this little area, as you can see on the ground there. Uh, two hits, one after the other. Um, probably shouldn't be using this ability to get back in a blue stance. It's very long. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, just two hits. You can see if you're following someone, you can get both the hits. But you're not necessarily always going to get both the hits. If I uh, go like this way... You see, I only hit him once there, so you, you need to be, like, tracking the enemy a little bit with this ability to make sure you get both the hits. Uh, something notable with this, though, is that it shreds prots 20% uh, in total, 10% on each hit. And so, it's actually really good. You know, 20% pen is, is a lot. Uh, it's prot shred as well, so if you're using this on backliners, your jungler, if they're physical, is going to do more damage to them. Your ADC, for example. So, that 20% prot shred, very underrated part of this ability, and... You should try and get this out before dumping your big damage, if at all possible. So you might want to do like this into this, and that's going to do like a little bit more damage than it normally would have done because you've got that 20% proc shred. Obviously, a level 1 Odin bot doesn't have much uh, much proc, so you're not going to notice a difference. Maybe we could try it on this one. This is normally going to do like about 149 on the base hit, but if we hit him with this first, we can see... 154. Uh, they don't have many prots. I think you can up the amount of prots they have here. They just have, like, very small amounts of prots, these only bots. But that 20% shield, uh, uh, sorry, that 20% protection shred is going to be very useful for you, especially against tanks, because King Arthur is a solo laner, and so if you're using this in the solo lane learning phase, the enemy almost certainly has some kind of physical defense against you, and it can be very useful for that. Uh, but moving on to his final basic ability, we have uh, Blade Storm, which is Big Spin. Beyblade King Arthur, yeah, this is ability probably a lot of you know from uh, Arthur, very iconic one. Uh, you just spin around, you deal a bunch of tick damage, I think five hits, and then a sixth hit, which is uh, way more damage. You can see here that the ticks are doing 72, final hit does 183, so, so it's going to do significantly more, probably like almost triple the amount of damage that the ticks do. So it's very important that you get that final last hit, even if you're just doing something like this, you're spinning at the back line, make sure you get that last hit on them, because that's where like a lot of the damage of this ability comes from. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, it's good for lane clear, because uh, minions are going to get easily hit by all of these ticks. A god might jump away or something, but uh, minions are definitely going to get hit by that. And, you know, this can hurt really hard if you do something like this. You know, you shred 20% of their props, then you go in with this, and it, it, it chunks quite a lot. This ability is uh, the most total damage out of all of his basic abilities. Um, but it's how, it's often hard to get that damage off on gods because it's a quite a long channel, about like two seconds that you're channeling there. So like people can easily jump away or, as I've mentioned before, they can cripple you out of it. And of course they can stun you out of it, silence you out of it. It is, I believe, slow, root, and knock-up immune. I'm not sure if it says here. Uh, yeah, it only says knock-up immune here, but I'm almost certain this ability is also slow and root immune. So uh, you can get on people quite easily with that, but it is very vulnerable to silences, stuns, and cripples specifically. Cripples are very easily accessed in Smite, and uh, this, this, and this, as I mentioned before, that they're all affected by cripples. So King Arthur does suffer a lot into that. You know, matchups like Arteo that can cripple you easily are going to be a little bit rough. But other than that, very solid ability that if you can get the damage of it off, it is, is very strong. But moving into his ultimate, which uh, we got to talk about the energy a little bit for this. So you can see in the bottom left uh, next to my abilities there, we've got our passive meter uh, with the sword that's slowly filling up with energy. You can also track your other stance cooldowns there. So for example, if I use my blue two, 
You can see there it's on cooldown. It's not going to have a three second cooldown in a regular game. I've got cooldown reduction on for jungle practice, but you can see the cooldowns of abilities in your other stances underneath your passive meter there. So that's like quite useful. Uh, but you can see there with the sword slowly filling up, as I mentioned in the passive section, hitting a gob with an ability will grant you a, a stack of steadfast. You can see that in the bottom left near my items. So I've got one stack now. Now I've got two, now I've got three, and now I've got four. Once you're at max stacks, you gain 180% energy gain, and you can see this sword is filling up relatively quickly. Uh, when your sword is at 35 energy, which is that little ticker, it's probably not going to show up very well with YouTube compression, but there's a little ticker slightly, like, uh, not quite halfway up the sword. You get access to your blue stance ultimate, which is 35 out of 100 energy. And this is a simple line stun with damage. Just like that. Uh, so it is pretty good for utility. Uh, it doesn't require anywhere near as much energy as this other ultimate, which we'll talk about in a second. It's relatively cheap in that regard. And so you can get this off, you know, multiple times a fight very quickly in the laning phase. And you can easily just stun out enemies, you know, to stop channels. Or like, for example, if someone's trying to run away, I can do this into the rest of my abilities and stuff like that. So it's good for just, like, getting people that are chasing away from you. Uh, you can also, like, use it for if you're running away as well, for example. So... Let's say I'm running away from this Odin bot here. I'm running away like this. I could just quickly do that. 180, hit him with it, and then continue running. Uh, he was very DR'd there because I've been stunning him and, and beating the crap out of him. But uh, when they're not DR'd, this stuns for, I believe, one second. Yeah, stuns enemies for one second. So it's not massively powerful, but the cooldown is 20 seconds. Um... Obviously, it says four seconds there, but uh, jungle practice CDR is 20 seconds by default. And it's very easy to like, if you have the max stacks, so let's just stack back up again. If you have max stacks of your passive, it's very easy. You can see that I'm just generating energy super quickly. So you can very easily get up to 35 energy and just keep like casting this ultimate, sometimes multiple times a fight, which is really good. Um, and it's very good for utility. But as you can see, once the sword charges up, it, gl it glows orange. It's, you're at 85 energy out of 100. You get access to your orange ultimate, which is uh, significantly more powerful. It's a dash where you're CC immune, and then you grab the enemy, throw them into the sky, unleash a barrage of attacks, and then slam them down. Uh, that slam down is some physical damage and some uh, based on percentage max health damage as well. So this is good for like hitting tanks, which is very good for solo lane. You know, this will hit the enemy solo lane surprisingly hard. A lot of people don't expect it because it does... Um, 9% max HP damage as well as 250 physical damage plus a little bit of scaling which won't really be that relevant You're not building power on Arthur unless you're trolling uh, And so yeah that 9% max health damage uh, can chunk tanks quite heavily and uh, squishies as well the, the total damage of this ability is kind of insane to be honest um, It has 2% max HP damage on all the slashes and then 9% uh, on the landing hit So I think it is yeah a barrage of six attacks and then the final one so that's going to be 21 percent max health damage so one fifth of the enemy team uh one fifth of the enemy you hit with this is health bar just gone obviously that's pre-mitigations uh you're not going to be building much penetration on arthur and so that damage will be less than you would think uh but 21 percent unmitigated of their max health just gone uh in addition to 70 damage per hit so that's going to be 420 base plus 250 that's 670 base damage plus 21 percent of their max health so this ability absolutely chunks um it's worth noting that you don't necessarily always want to be saving up for the maximum energy ultimate. It is better, but it also costs, you know, double the amount of energy. More than double, I think. And so it's actually fine to just sometimes go for the go for the 1A. You know, even when I'm like this amount of energy, I can just go for the 1A and I can continue uh, using all my abilities. Get back up to the amount of energy that I'm, that I'm needing. And then I could just quickly go in and, and go for one of these. Uh, these bots are immune to it. <laughs> if, if the enemy beads is it, they won't get thrown into the sky. And also if they beads while in the sky, they'll get dropped down and you won't deal any more of the ultimate damage. So if you already hit them like three times, they'll still take that damage, obviously. But they'll come straight down if they beads it. So it's a little bit vulnerable to beads. But if you can burn a backliner's beads just by using uh, the, the 4B, it's absolutely worth it for you as the other player. Because you can very quickly generate enough energy, at least for another one of your um, small ultimates. And then when you use another one of the small ultimates when they don't have beads, that stun is going to be a lot more valuable. You know, one second stun when they can't immune it. Uh, going to be very good for that. So you can just go like this, and then you've got your ultimate ready. You can stun them again. So uh, absolutely worth to burn beads with this ability. And if uh, the enemy team doesn't have beads, it's very strong. It does a lot of damage. Alright, so that's like the basics of Arthur's abilities, or all of the stuff they do and some of their applications and stuff. Uh, I'm going to go more into a little bit of like more in-depth tips and tricks now in terms of things you can do in your Arthur gameplay to improve it and that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll start off uh, over here by the minion wave because uh, Arthur's clear is very good. And what you want to be doing as Arthur is usually I try to engage with uh, the combo stance 3 here. So I will do this. 
And when I do this, I want to hit the enemy gob with a few of those spins because it'll group up the minion wave. I'll try and find a clip of me playing and doing it that I can put in the background that'll be more illustrative than here because I can't um, have a ball over here to hit. But basically, you want to spin and then tag the god with it as you go past. And then you're going to hit the entire wave and it's going to be grouped up and you can hit it like this where you've got like all of them aggroed on you. Uh, because if you hit the enemy god with an ability, obviously the enemy minion wave aggroes to you. And so you can group up the wave for that and then, you know, hit them all with like this, for example, in the melee range bonus damage and stuff like that. Uh, you can spin on them with uh, the, the blade storm this one and and you can just get really good wave clear by doing that similar to Bologna where she like tags the enemy god with the spin of her bludgeon before uh going for the rest of the wave it's much more efficient than just like hitting little bits of the wave like that if you, you can group it all up and, and hit it with all of your abilities all at once proc blue stone and all of it you have some insane clear especially in the early game and you can out clear most solo laners with that uh, also on the 3b it's by far his best ability for energy gain um it gives i believe nine energy by default uh, which obviously goes up if you have stacks of Steadfast. And it's just way more uh, energy than any other ability is going to give you. So you can see my sword there. I'm at like probably approximately 70 energy. I hit the spin here. I'm basically at 85 right there. Like it, it, it gives an absolute crap ton of energy in comparison to the other abilities. Especially when you have your passive up. And you can very easily farm ultimates like this using it. Uh, it's by far your best energy gain ability. So ideally you want to be using it. You know once you've hit a few abilities already. And you've stacked up your Steadfast passive. And then you can maximize your energy gain when you go in with this. Uh, worth noting that you also gain energy off minions. You don't gain stacks of steadfast off minions, but you will gain energy meter off of, off of minions that you're hitting with this. So as long as you're hitting anything with, with these ticks of damage, it, it won't give you more energy for every single target you hit. But as long as you're hitting something, minion or god or, or jungle boss or whatever, you're going to be gaining energy when you're spinning with this and it gives a lot per tick. So it's one of his best ways to gain energy and spam out ultimates. Uh, another thing that's very important to King Arthur's gameplay is his basic attacks. So, uh, as, as I mentioned in the passive section, uh, Arthur's basic attacks don't benefit from attack speed and also can't proc on hit effects. And that's because he has somewhat unique basic attacks. Uh, instead of just like basic attacking like normal, like this, uh, he, he uh, dashes forward. Uh, I believe this is about 15 units or so. Let's test it. This is 20. Okay, maybe it's 25 actually. Yeah, because he about 25 units, because uh, I'm in between these two lines here. About 25 units, he'll dash forward, which, which is substantial. Uh, you know, if the sword ends like here, I can just lunge forward and hit him with a basic attack. And this isn't necessarily so great just for the basic attacks itself. You know, yes, you can do this and just like keep chasing people down by holding left click and stuff. But the main application of this really is uh, extending the range of his abilities. So I've, I've got my um, 4A ready here, for example. Uh, I can't actually show that it wouldn't hit because it's uh, instant cast, but uh, if I was to do it like this, look, at, you can see the range. And then if I go generate some more energy here real quick, there we go. You can do a little uh, auto attack first and you can massively extend the range of your ultimate by like, you know, 20, 25 units. And so if someone's potentially going to be out of range uh, of your ultimate, you can just very easily... Do a basic attack. We'll see if we can get him, like, really at the tip of range. So you can do a basic attack and then go like that. We didn't quite get him, but uh, you, you can increase the range of all of your abilities this way. It's not just a 4A, of course. Um, and this gives him a lot of extra mobility as well. So, for example, instead of just going into Bladestorm like this, or just into... Uh, I, just, I just did it there. I, I'm so used to doing this on Arthur that I, I just did it, dude. Uh, it, it'll become second nature to you once you play Arthur. But you do a basic attack before going into it. And that's going to extend the range of your ability. Give you a lot more ways to like maneuver around the fight using basic attacks. Weaving them in between your abilities. And, and it makes Arthur into one of the highest mobility warriors in the game. Because he has three dashes. And can use those basic attacks to like very easily uh, extend the range of his things. Uh, worth noting that if you don't want to do this dash, simply hold back. Or you can just, like, tap back. Once you get good at it, you can tap back for literally half a second and just cancel, like, the uh, the, the launch and, and you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, if, you, for example, you've got minions on, like, the enemy tower line and they're, like, right there and you, you want to attack them, you can just do this. Oh, I fucked it up. You can just do this and, and like, basic attack them like that instead of, like, lunging forward into the tower, for example. Sometimes you might not want to get the lunge. But, yeah, you can extend the range of all of his abilities this way, getting on people much easier, utilize uh, his mobility to its fullest effect. Uh, getting good with this kind of, like, air cancelling, like you know, mobility stuff with Arthur is a, is a lot of his, like, more advanced gameplay, I would say. I uh, extend the range of the 4B as well. You know, we didn't quite get him there, of course, but you can massively extend the range of your abilities, uh, massively increase your movement. Uh, it's a very key skill to playing Arthur effectively. You know, if you see a noob Arthur, th they won't be doing this kind of stuff. But when you see a good Arthur, uh, th this is, like, kind of really the difference, I guess. And so I mentioned this already, but uh, his 3A is knock-up immune, and his 3B is knock-up 
uh, root and slow immune. And you can use this to like immune certain abilities. So for example, if you see a very telegraph knockup like Cerber Assault or Sylvan Assault, you can just immediately activate this and, and you'll immune the knockup. You won't immune the damage, obviously, but uh, you'll immune that CC and you can continue chasing. So you can use this, all this, to immune knockups, and this specifically will immune roots and slows. And so if you're going to get hit by like a very telegraph CC, uh, like a Cerbolt, you can just use these to uh, completely immune that. And so I showed this little combo in the ability section where you can do this into this, because it's guaranteed after the knockup. But um, a much better, like, enhanced version of that, I suppose, is uh, if we can generate some energy, you can just combo that directly into the, um, the, the big stance ultimate, the 85 energy. The orange ultimate here. So if we just go over, this is just completely guaranteed. There's nothing they can do about that. And so once you hit that knock up, uh, if you're worried about missing your ult or anything, sometimes it, it can be a little hard to hit um, the the orange ultimate at like very far ranges because um, it's not super fast. It is fast, but it's not super fast. And so sometimes you might not be able to hit it when you're at like max range. Um, but this can just give you a guaranteed way to do it. Like there's no way that they're escaping that. Uh, obviously, the closer you are to them, the easier it's going to be to hit. If you're already in melee range, uh, you can probably just hit it anyway, but it's just a nice little combo to know that you, you can just do your 2B into your 4B, and that's always going to hit them guaranteed. Uh, it's a knock-up, it's never going to be the yard or anything like that, you don't have to worry about that, so... Just a very good way of, like, easily uh, getting in range. You can also weave in a basic attack in there, so you can do it like that. And okay, a little bit of extra damage from the basic attack. You should be doing that on most of Arthur's abilities, I feel like. You know, not only for this, like, mobility aspect that I was talking about earlier, but just in general, in a lot of his abilities, you can weave in a basic attack to just get that little bit of extra damage uh, and, and mobility and stuff. It's something you should be doing on Arthur. It's something you should be paying attention to. And then you can just do, do like, the combos. On the topic of the 4B, though, the big Excalibur's Wrath Ultimate, I would recommend not just sitting at max energy. So, like, for example, I'm at very high energy here. Once I get to um, a little bit more, you can see the sword is completely filled on my passive meter next to my abilities. I'm not gaining any more energy. I'm completely wasting that. And so, for example, if you're in lane and you don't think you have kill potential in the near future, I would recommend just burning this. Just, like, go and just do this. Collect that damage because it does a lot of damage and it will, you know, poke the enemy out substantially and allow you to, like, threaten them, you know, threaten a kill on them later, force them back, make them miss minion ways, force them to play passive, lose gold to tower, all that kind of stuff. And if you're already at maximum energy, you're just wasting uh, the energy that you would be gaining otherwise. So you, you may as well just dump that 4B ultimate into them, start gaining energy again, and then maybe, you know, after you've dumped it into them and they're kind of low, you get, you get access to this and then you can go in and do, do this and maybe, like, finish off a kill or something like that. So unless you think you're going to need that 4B for, you know, either a gank or like kill potential in the near future you know the next 10 seconds or something i would recommend just burning it in the learning phase in team fights you might want to keep it a little bit longer because uh that can be a really good way to engage you know you blink you blink in you do that and then like 4b them into the sky or on a carry if they don't have beads that's gonna hurt a lot and if they do have beads they're gonna burn that and then you can continue chasing them down you know maybe, maybe you get one of these going and you can stun them and then go in and, and do the, the usual other stuff so but yeah in lane i would recommend just burning that 4b uh pretty much as you get it unless you think you're going to need it for kill potential because it does so much damage and then you can just continue gaining energy start getting ready for like either another 4a or just start charging for your next 4b and just keep dumping it into them it does so much damage and will give you a lot of lane pressure for that uh, so i think i mentioned this already in the ability section but i do like to save my 2a the battle stomp just for quickly getting into combo stance uh, it's the quickest to activate you know this one has a little bit of animation time before you can start doing stuff again and uh, this one has even more but the 2a is just extremely quick and if you need access to the cripple uh, in combo stance, or maybe you need access to the knockup immediately, or something like that to cancel an ability. It's just a very easy way to quickly get into combo stance and use any abilities there. You know, you might need this for the knockup immunity, for example. Very easy to just quickly get access to those combo stance abilities, and so I like using this ability that way. Uh, it's quite a good use for it. Oh, and one quick final thing before we move on to leveling order and builds for King Arthur. Uh, if you're using this, you can hold back to slow yourself down. You see how slow I'm going there? That's because I'm holding back. Uh, if you do it normally, you're just going to go, like, relatively fast and use that full mobility. But if you hold back while you're using the ability, for example, like if this order is running away from me, I might just want to stay on him and just like, you can like tap it if you want to, to like make sure you match the pace of the god and make sure you're getting all those ticks. So I'm like, I'm going fast, I'm going slow, I'm going fast, I'm going slow. You can just like uh, control the pace of that and make sure you land all of the ticks, you know, on minions or on gods or whatever. That's just like one final tip. But yeah, let's quickly talk about leveling order. So for the most part on King Arthur, you're going to be maxing your one first. This does uh, the big chunky burst damage. Uh, great for lane clear because this has the bonus melee damage, which hurts the warriors in the wave more than the archers. The warriors are more tanky than the archers. And so you can do like this on the wave. 
And you go in for this on, like, the side of the wave, for example. And then that'll usually, like, equalize the damage a little bit because this is doing 50% more to the front ones, which are a little bit more tanky. And so you can get good lane clear that way. Good burst damage. Good for securing, like, silver buffs in lane and stuff. Good for bumping damage in a totem. But I do sometimes like to level Arthur's 3 in matchups where they can't get away from it and or can't cancel it. So if they have no way to stop this, you know, no cripple, no silence, anything like that, and they also don't have a jump that can easily just get away from the ticks of damage, I do like to level this sometimes because it technically does the most damage of all your abilities by like a decent margin. And so yeah, in, in certain matchups, I do like to level the three, but I think for the most part, you should be leveling the one, especially in any matchup where the three can be canceled. You definitely don't want to be leveling the three because uh, you're not going to be able to clear the lane if like uh, an RTO just instantly presses two when you're trying to do blaze storm on the wave. If you try and spin on the wave, you just get crippled, nothing's going to happen. So for the most part, in most matchups, you want to be leveling the one. Uh, and then I do the three afterwards. Then I start leveling the ultimate. I do my one and my three completely before I start leveling the ult. Uh, mainly because this, it already has max HP damage on it, and, and you gain less from, um, it does increase the max HP damage on landing, but the 2% max HP on, on the hits is still the same. And you, you do gain a decent amount of damage, but it's mainly for the 4B. You know, for the 4A, it's like, you don't really care about the damage of, of this. You're mainly just looking for the stun. You're just looking to stun and then, like, continue and combo. So, for the most part, I like to level my 1 and my 3 before I level my ult because they're up way more often. You know, Arthur is an ability spammer at heart, and so you're going to be using this and this and this way more often than you're going to be using the ultimate, and you, you get, like, more overall damage by just, like, leveling... Uh, these these two abilities first and then after the ultimate i finally like to level these you know as i mentioned these are more for utility and not necessarily for great damage uh, just for the slow and then for the knockups like set up into some of your other abilities you know they deal 155 and 230 on max rank it, it's not really anything super impressive so th those get leveled last but i like to do one three alt two uh, and for starting the game you want to start with your three because it does the most overall damage for clearing camps and you hit level two anyway so you start with your three and then once you clear the camps you get your one and, and you go on and do the learning phase all right, but moving on to items. Uh, I think we have to go to the fountain to check these out. Uh, so, Bluestone Pendant, essential on King Arthur. Do not go anything else. Uh, he is the best abuser of this item in the entire game. He has six easy access abilities that can very easily just uh, be spammed on cooldown. A lot of other stand switches, it's either like conditional, like a Cullen's Rage, or uh, one of their like main abilities, like Tia, for example, is used up in the stand switch. And so Tia only really has four like core abilities that he can spam. And even Tia is an excellent bluestone user, and you should almost always be going bluestone on him. King Arthur, even more essential. Uh, it's, it's one of his best items. So you absolutely want to be going bluestone. You're going to bluestone brooch. Uh, let's sell Let's sell the gladiator shield, and we'll, we'll do like a little bit more of like an actual build. So you want to go bluestone is a bluestone brooch. Uh, that is always what you want to be going on King Arthur. And then, usually, it's gladiator shield first item. Uh, this comes with HP 5 for the laning phase, which is really nice. Protections and health to get good effective health. Cooldown reduction, which you want max cooldown reduction on Arthur always, every single game. No question. Question. And he's a warrior, so max cooldown reduction is only 30%. Make sure you're not uh, building more than that, you're going to be wasting it. So, uh, against a physical matchup, immediately into Glad Shield. Uh, against a magical matchup, it, it can depend. Sometimes, if I'm feeling saucy, I just go Glad Shield anyway, because it's so good on King Arthur, and it still does offer a lot of health. Uh, you're still getting the value of all the other benefits of this item. All you are losing is 40 physical protection. You're still getting the health, you're still getting the HP 5 for sustain, you're still getting the cooldown reduction and damage for more abilities to get out and stuff like that. So it's not as bad as you would think to go Gladiator Shield into a magical matchup. I know that sounds like trolling, but if it's like a low damage Guardian, you know, maybe a Sobek or something like that, um, you can kind of get away with going this in, even into a magical matchup and, and you'll kind of be fine. But if you're not really comfortable doing that and you don't think you're going to be able to play that uh, super effectively, what I like to go is usually Genji's Guard uh, is, is my default option, you know, health, magical protections, MP5, which is very nice for Arthur because he's an ability spammer, uses a lot of mana and cooldown reduction, plus that burst cooldown reduction as well uh, when you take magical damage. Uh, and uh, Pestilence. If, if you need Pestilence, 70, 200 is extremely a good defense. You're going to be very tanky against a magical lane opponent when you buy this, but of course, you only get this against some kind of magical healer. Uh, not necessarily a healer, but someone with magical and good self-sustain, like Arteo, for example. Uh, this is a matchup where you would buy Pestilence. Uh, don't worry too much about magical matchups. They're going to be like 10 to 20% of what you face. The vast majority of soul is going to be playing a warrior or maybe a bulky assassin, so you're just going to be going Glad Shield in, in, most, in most games. But Pestilence and Genji's Guard are my two options that I like to go into a magical matchup. 
Uh, and sometimes I just go Gladiator Shield anyway if I'm feeling saucy and it's a matchup where I'm not too scared of the enemy soul and are killing me like a Sorlik, for example. Uh, but then after that, I usually like to go straight into a Stone of Binding. Uh, this item, really good defenses, 35, 35, 200, going to make you very tanky. And then you get that uh, up to, is it, I think it's 16 uh, flat pen, depending on your level. So I usually like to just go straight into this. Um, it's just really good for like increasing your overall damage output, still keeping you tanky. Uh, it is mixed defense and you could... Uh, consider going into something like another physical defense item if you're uh, wanting to win the lane a little bit harder. So maybe you could go into something like a Guardian male if uh, they're an auto attacker or you could maybe go into uh, Contagion if they have any kind of healing or you're struggling with hard CC and stuff like that. I wouldn't recommend Breastplate because that ties up your CDR options a little bit and uh, what we're going to get into now is Pridwin. Pridwin essential on King Arthur in my opinion. In this new patch where I got the new glyphs, uh, Red Pridwin is the best glyph on him because uh, usually... Let's, let's go... Oh, we actually have the energy. So, if you go blue Pridwin... Let's just sell this. If you go blue Pridwin, and then you use your 4B, the shield activates immediately, you see there. And by the time they've landed on the ground, Pridwin's almost gone. It expires there. And so, like, that can be useful for the damage, but uh, you waste a lot of, like, the uptime on the shield. And yeah, sometimes the shield gets burned off anyway before it expires, but it's just a little bit of anti-synergy uh, with, with King Arthur, and you, you're simply better off going with the red Pridwin. And yeah, you can see here, if we grab red Pridwin, uh, it's just going to be overall better for King Arthur. So even if you're, like, quite far out with this, you're still going to get that red Pridwin proc immediately on uh, using the 4A, for example, and then, you know, you can stay in range, and then you're, you're going to get the extra damage proc. So you're going to get the double damage proc basically guaranteed on Arthur. He's, he's very good at sticking to people. Uh, very good at that, you know, with his, with his high mobility and his uh, just like generally like good CC. You know, you can slow them, you can knock them up and stuff like that. And uh, as I'll demonstrate now, even with the 4B, where you would normally be wasting a little bit of the blue privilege shield time, as you hit them with this, boom, you get that proc. And that actually hits on the way up. And then when you come down, you've got a little bit of time left before you get another burst. And so it makes your 4B hit basically even harder because you're getting double Pridwin procs uh, once you use your 4B on an enemy. Uh, Red Pridwin, absolutely the way to go on King Arthur. And in my opinion, as essential as Bluestone and Gladiator Shield. Uh, Bluestone, Glad, and Pridwin are the only three items that I would say absolutely need to be in every single King Arthur build or you are trolling your brains out. Th these three items, they're practically built for him, it feels like. Uh, you know, Glad Shield and Bluestone for the fact that he's an ability spammer. Pridwin for the fact that you can get ults out on Pridwin's internal cooldown, which I believe is 40 seconds, whereas a lot of warriors, even with max CDR, their ults might be like 54 seconds until they're wasting it a little bit. But you can see Pridwin's got two seconds seconds left on it now. Boom. Straight back in. Uh, proccing it on cooldown. It's 45 seconds, actually, the internal cooldown improvement. Uh, so, like, th these items just absolutely built for him. Uh, but that does run into a slight problem with the rest of his builds, because... Gladiator Shield, 10% cooldown. Pridwin, 20% cooldown. Warrior, Inherent CDR, 10%. You're at the cap. And so, for the rest of your build, this is partly why I like Binding so much. You can't build any CDR in the rest of your build because these items are essential, in my opinion. You could drop the Pridwin if you wanted something else. You know, like, if you went Genji's Guard in the laning phase, for example, you could drop the Pridwin. But, in my opinion, it's essential. I, I wouldn't do that. And it does restrict your build options uh, ever so slightly. You know, if, if, for example, you might have wanted to go Spirit Robe, or maybe a, probably not a Mantle of Discord, this time's Garbo right now. But if you wanted to go Spirit Robe, for example, it's got 10% CDR on it. And, and so you're not realistically going to be a goal this item because you're kind of just wasting one of the stats. You could, to be fair. Spirit Robe is such a good item that if you need it, and you're getting CC down, you need that 15% damage mitigation from the passive, you can still go this in this kind of build and just waste the CDR. It's kind of fine. Um, but it does tie up your options a little bit. And so I looked, I like to look through for um, other items that have no CDR on uh, to kind of complete my build. Manticore Spikes is a very good one. Uh, Arthur procs this off of this ability, as well as his uh, both of his ultimates. So he's going to proc Manticore Spikes somewhat often. Not massively often, because uh, this is a cripple, which is a soft CC... Uh, and he has no other CC and like the rest of it is kit. It's just going to be in the ultimates and it's going to be in this knock up here. So Manticore Spikes, he's not the best user of it in my opinion. There are definitely gods that use it better, but you, you can absolutely get away with Manticore Spikes. It's not a core item for him by any means, but uh, still a pretty solid option for you and has no CDR on it. So it's great for this kind of build. Uh, I'll quickly mention Arc Druid's Fury. Don't, don't call this. Uh, it straight up doesn't work. I'll, I'll show an example here. So right here, you can see I've taken some damage. Uh, I've been in a team fight or whatever. I've got six stacks of Arcturus Fury up. Let's basic attack this Odin. Oh no, nothing happens. Yeah, King Arthur's basic attacks, as I mentioned in the ability overview, they don't proc item effects of any kind. That includes Arcturus Fury's passive. So don't build this item on him. It's literally useless. It's just going to give you uh, 
30 of each prots, 250 health and 15 MP5. The passive, you can delete that. That doesn't exist. Uh, don't build this item on, on King Arthur. We will officially go over to the store and sell it just so I don't confuse anyone that's maybe skipping around the video. Definitely don't build Ardra's Fury. Not a good idea. Um, erosion is still good though. Most of this tree is pretty good. I think Abyssal Stone can, can be good for him as well because you can very easily apply that 20% negative CDR. Uh, this is an item that is like nebulous to me. I don't know if it's good or not. <laughs> it's very hard to judge whether this item's good. If this item in a, in future, if you're watching this video six months in the future and people find out Abyssal Stone is OP, build it, build it. Because Arthur is one of the best users of this item in the entire game because you've got so many abilities that you can throw out and just spam at people, applying that negative 20% CDR debuff on them. So Arthur, excellent user of this item. I just don't know if it's that good. If you believe this item is insane, buy it on Arthur, absolutely. Um, but Erosion, still good. Decent base stats, uh, pretty good base stats actually. And if you need this against like a Yamoja, a Nike, an Odin, a Raven, any of that kind of stuff, uh, just buy this. It's a good like counter item. You can buy this, uh, you know, after your core kind of stuff. Uh, Megadia Mail is fine uh, if you're against heavy um, auto attacker teams. You know, a lot of hunters right now going max attack speed tread builds. You're seeing a lot of like Bakasuras and that kind of stuff in the jungle. Maybe you're seeing double hunter comps. This item is great for that. Uh, the base stats are okay, but the passive, you know, reducing their movement and attack speed pretty substantially by 32% uh, uh, max stacks. V very good. Uh, your go to like anti uh, auto attacker item on King Arthur. Uh, I mentioned this before, but Contagion is very good. Um, if you're in a matchup, where this item is getting value from both of its different passives. If you're getting anti-heal value and you're getting major hard crowd control uh, value where you're dealing that pulse damage, I think you could maybe even justify going this first instead of Gladiator Shield because it has similar stats. You know, it has Fizz Prots, Health. Uh, this one has MP5 instead of HP5 and it still does increase your damage because like if a tier is fearless in you, you're going to get that tick damage on him from Contagion's passive. And so in, in a matchup like tier, in a matchup like Hercules, maybe even against Serta, uh, you could probably get away with Contagion first and then go into Glad Shield. Um, otherwise, you can just go Glad Shield into Contagion and it's completely fine. Uh, if you're against a team with heavy healing, you probably want this in your build somewhere. Uh, you know, if your laner has heavy healing, I would go either first or second. Uh, if, if your laner doesn't have healing, it's like a healer mid or a healer support or something you can get. It's a little bit later in your build, you know, maybe in like fifth or sixth slot or something like that. But yeah, Contagion's good. No CDR on it, so you're absolutely fine there. Uh, Spectral Armor, similar to Guardian Mail. If you need this, if there's a lot of crit going around, if they have, you know, a crit hunter that's destroying you or they have a crit hunter and a Mercury or something, uh, buy this item. Uh, very good. It's just uh, quite niche depending on when you're going to need it. Uh, in terms of late game magical defense, I talked a little bit about uh, Genji's Guard and Pestilence in terms of your laning phase magical defense. Uh, those are like the two options I typically like to go for in the laning phase. Um, but in terms of late game magical defense, I like only Hunter's Guard. So for example, if I've gone this type of build that I've already got down here against a physical lane opponent, I'm a little bit lacking on magical defense here. I've just got a little bit from Pribwin, a little bit from Binding. So I might like to go an only Hunter's Guard if uh, I'm a little bit scared of the magicals on the enemy team. You know, maybe if they have more than just a mid lane mage, if they have like a mid lane mage and a Hebo or an Alquang in the jungle, uh, I will definitely go dedicated magical defense later. Um, a lot of the time, if the mid mage is the only magical damage on the team, you know, other than a support guardian that's not doing that much, uh, I will just sometimes skip magical defense entirely, and I will just go like glad shield into a bunch of mixed defense because mixed defense is really strong right now. So, you know, if you're going into something like stone of binding, and then you may be going an erosion or an abyssal stone or something like that, maybe you're going gauntlet of thieves, which is another one that I'll mention later on. It's a lot of mixed defense, and you can get enough magical that way that you can like still kind of survive. But if you do want dedicated magical defense, for the late game. Only Hunters is great. Because um, you're going to be fighting a lot of people. You're going to be diving the back line like a solo leader typically does with King Arthur. And so you can get uh, that 9% damage mitigation uh, fully stacked up. Crowd control reduction also very nice so you don't get chain CC'd. Uh, moving on to Thebes, though, um, a little bit of a weird choice for solo learners, you might be thinking, but in my opinion, this item is really solid uh, late game on a solo learner. You buy this in 5th or 6th slot, and you can very easily uh, get it stacked up in fights. You know, any god kill or assist is going to give you 5 stacks, and then you can just, in general, when, like, minion waves are getting cleared out, or you're taking camps on, like, late game rotations to team fights and stuff, uh, just, just be near a teammate, you'll get this stacked up relatively quickly, much quicker than you'd think. And this item is really efficient defenses-wise. It gives 55 of each and 200 health, which, you know, if you combine, if you compare that to a lot of the stuff on here, because that's similar kind of like stat spread, it's got way more like overall base stats than all of these items that, that you have on here. And so Thebes is like one of the most efficient defense items in the game in terms of giving you both kinds of defenses and health. So it's really good for your effective health and tankiness overall. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily go this every game, but if I'm looking for a little bit of extra tankiness in the late game, and I think... I think uh, there's going to be a little bit of a lull where I can maybe get this stacked up and just like sneak it in before the next team fight. Uh, Gauntlet of Thebes, underrated in my opinion. Good, good way to get your defenses up for, you know, Glad Shield procs and Proven procs and stuff. 
Uh, I will quickly mention Heartward Glyph. Uh, this has been kind of a go-to. Amulet of the Stronghold specifically has been kind of a go-to for solo laners for a little while. Uh, you basically just go like triple physical defense against your lane opponent and just buy this in, in like fifth slot and you're fine. Um, in terms of magical defense because it gives so much on its own. You know, the aura gives 15, it gives 45 base, so that's 60. And then you get about 30 or 40 from the conversion. So you're close to 100 magical protections on one item as well as 200 health. This used to be really good. The, the one problem with this, it would still be absolutely fine in one of your king Arthur builds, but the one problem with this is you need Pribwin and, and you want a Glyph Pribwin. The, the Glyphs are really strong right now. Um, if in the future, you know, again, if you're watching this six months down the line and the Pribwin Glyphs have been nerfed into Oblivion and they're not really worth going anymore, you, you could switch out your build and go like triple physical defense into Amulet of the Stronghold. That's still probably good, but right now, I don't think it's worth it because you need the Pribwin Glyphs. That's the only reason. And finally, we'll talk about Dawnbringer. Uh, I don't like going any kind of like dedicated damage item on King Arthur. I don't think it's worth it. You just want to be tanky and you want to get as much value as you can out of like Stone of Binding to reduce their procs, Glad Shield procs, Blue Stone procs, Pribwin procs. That's what you want to be doing. Look at all these yellow numbers I've got going on in right now. That, that, that's what King Arthur's all about. Th those big yellow numbers uh, and using its base damage. I, I wouldn't recommend going any kind of... Um, dedicated damage item on him. It's just not worth it. Just go max tanky and try and utilize those yellow numbers for as much damage as you can. The one like semi exception to this is Dawnbringer, uh, which is not a full damage item. You know, you only see 30 power on there. The rest of this is all defense and utility. Uh, it's, a, it's a bruiser item, really. So you get 30 power, 250 health, 20% CCR, uh, which is nice because not a lot of the items that you're building right now have, C have CCR. So it's good to get a little bit of that in your build. And then, of course, uh, when your ultimate is finished casting, your props and movement speed are increased by 10% for each enemy god near you, stacking up to three times in the last six seconds. So you're going to be getting a 30% prot and movement speed boost if, if you're near three enemies in the back line, which is, uh, as I mentioned with Only Hunter's Gab, you're going to be near three enemies in the back line relatively often. You know, enemy mid, enemy ADC, and enemy support are going to be kind of grouping up around each other in the back line. You can very easily kind of like get in, use your ultimate, and, and you're going to get a lot of value from Dawnbringer's uh, passive effect. I think this item's really insane right now. Um, it's not a core item on Arthur, but if you're wanting a little bit more damage uh, and a little bit more chase down with that movement speed, you know, you're going to get all that movement speed after, like, maybe, for example, you've um, stunned them with your 4A, so you've done this, you go in. Uh, let's buy Dawnbringer, actually, and I'll show you how much, like, insane movement speed uh, this item gives. So, you're going in, you stun them, you get that massively increased movement speed, you can keep in range for your priv win, you can, you know, use your movement skills to, like, chase them down. It's very hard to escape an Arthur when they proc Dawnbringer and they have all this extra movement with the basic attacks and stuff. And then you, know, you can go for the roll or whatever. It wouldn't happen that quickly in a, in a real match because I've got Richie's cooldowns on my abilities and stuff. But it's very hard to escape an Arthur when they have a Dawnbringer going on you. Uh, and it's just another way to, like, get a little bit more damage out because you've got 30 physical power there. And yeah, that's pretty much all I want to talk about with items. So I'll just go over like a quick, just like general example build. That, uh, if all that item information I just spewed out, you went over your head and you just wanted a build to use in your games. Uh, we'll just go over a quick example build of one of those before we close out the video. So you're going to be starting off with Bluestone Pendant. And... Uh, Almost all the time, you're going to be grabbing round shield, going into glad shield first item. Uh, if you want to, you know, you might be going into magical defense, where you might be going like a pestilence or a Genji. Just, just grab the appropriate tier two. I'm pretty sure they all cost the same anyway. And then you'll just get, um, I believe you can get four pots. I usually go three health, one multi, because Arthur does use a little bit of mana. And so even with your blue buff, you, you sometimes run out of mana when you're spamming. So I like to go one multi. Um, both because it gives a little mana back and it can stack with the health pots, so you can be very aggressive on the early waves because uh, you can stack up health pots and multi pots at once, so they're taking uh, 15 health per second back to you. So I like that. Uh, first item, you're going to be finishing Glad Shield, of course. Uh, sometimes it could be different, as I mentioned, uh, with magical defense, or maybe you want to go Contagion first, um, but usually going to be finishing Glad Shield straight away. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Contagion, if you need it, uh, you could go into some different kind of defense, but for the most part, I do like to go into Stone of Binding second item. Very good defensive stats. Getting that pen online is nice. It's a little bit less useful against uh, your lane opponent, of course, because uh, it's flat pen. But, you know, the, the twin cleave 20% prop reduction applies first, and then you get that flat pen afterwards, so... So pretty, pretty nice there overall. And the mixed defense can be nice for, like, you know, rotations and stuff in the early game. After that, Pribwin. Uh... Stone of Binding is flexible. You, you can go like different things in the slot, but I think Pribwin should always be your third slot item, in my opinion. Uh, when you glyph it is something I'm still undecided on. Sometimes, some games, I will glyph it immediately as I buy it because I think the glyphs are really strong right now, but you can also wait until a little bit later in the game because Pribwin itself is already a very stat inefficient item in terms of like the defenses it's giving you. It's just 25 of each and no health. And so it's already quite stat inefficient and then spending 600 more gold on something that gives you no other stats. 
Uh, it can put you a little bit behind in terms of just like general tankiness. So sometimes you can uh, skip glyphing it for a little while, get like your next item and then glyph it or something like that. But uh, yeah, you do want to be glyphing this at some point into Red Rib when it's absolutely the way you want to go. And then, yeah, the rest of the build kind of diverges from that a little bit. It's kind of like pick up what you need. And so, like, in terms of the most generic uh, options for these final two slots, uh, I will probably go something like uh, Thebes into Dawnbringer. This will probably be, like, my most default Arthur build right now. Uh, Thebes can also be... Uh, swapped out for mana cost spikes if you want a little bit more damage uh, for a little bit less tankiness mana cost spikes there is also very solid I personally like Thebes I like to be a little bit more tanky and just use those yellow numbers for my damage but if you want to go Manticore obviously it has yellow numbers as well so if you want a little bit more damage you can go Manticore there but this is like the default like most default build I could give you uh, it will change depending on you know magical solo matchups and stuff like that but this is like the most generic Arthur build I can give you that will work in almost every single game and if you're not playing Conquest this will be absolutely fine for you this is mostly like the counter building stuff is mostly a conquest to be honest if you're playing them in random casual modes that this this build just build it and it'll work for you it'll be fine but yeah the, these final two slots are very much flexible um you know as i said you can go man cost bikes in there you can go contagion if you need it uh, maybe you want to go into a pestilence in the late game or an only hunter scar for example if you're trying to deal with magicals a little bit better um you know, maybe you need an Erosion to deal with a Nike matchup or a, an Odin matchup or a Yomoja matchup or something like that. So, really, you can kind of go into any of the items I outlined in the previous section here. Uh, hopefully, that didn't go too much over your head in terms of why you would want to build certain, like, counter items in certain situations. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of a just generic build, I'll probably go Thebes Stormbringer here. That, that'll be, like, my go-to, but y you can switch it up, absolutely. I'd say the only core items here are Bluestone, Glad Shield, and Pribwin. Binding is, is close to core, in my opinion. It, it's so good for him. Because uh, uh, I mentioned Mana Cost Bikes. Like, the only way to activate it is, is, is through your ultimates and this ability. But um, Zona Binding doesn't only proc on hard CC. It procs on any CC. And so this slow and this cripple also procs Zona Binding. So I, I would argue Zona Binding is kind of core on him, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, you, you have a lot of flex in those last two slots to kind of fit in what you need. Um, in terms of Relics, I haven't mentioned that yet, actually. Uh, you're usually going to be going TP first. I don't think you can sell Relics in Jungle Practice, or maybe you can. Oh, you can, good. Uh, so usually you're going to be going TP uh, as your first Relic in, in the solo lane. Uh, straight into persistent teleport. I like to upgrade this fairly early because it gives you a lot of like lane pressure and, and rotation potential. Um, and then in terms of your last relic, I, it's got to be blink. Like it's, it simply has to be blink. I like to go the slow blink so I can blink in and like stick to people. If you like flame blink, you can get away with that as well. That, that's also decent. Uh, if you don't want to go TP in the laning phase, then I would just go blink first and then beads. Uh, if you think you can get away with not going TP, you know, if you think you're going to win the lane anyway and you're not really going to need the like safety of TP, uh, then you can get away with going blink as your first relic in the laning phase, then grabbing beads for the late game, and you're very hard to stop at that point. You know, you've got cooldown beads, so if you're, like, spamming out all your cooldowns and stuff like that, you just beads, get your cooldowns back, and you can just continue, like, doing stuff. Um, this is really hard to stop, and after that has blink and beads and all this other shit going into your backline, so you can do that as well. Um, but I would recommend if you're not, you know, very, very well versed in your King Arthur and very well versed in your soul lane, I would just go teleport. Uh, it's going to make the laning phase a, a lot simpler for you. You can just back and TP back in whenever you're, like, low and stuff. But yeah, I think that's all I've got for you on uh, on uh, the one true king himself. One of my favorite gods. Uh, I think he's on my fourth or third highest worshipper at the moment. Uh, but I've been spamming him lately. I think he's back in the meta in, in like a big way. He uses so many of the items uh, right now. You know, as I said, pro probably four of these items I have right now are core on him because of how well he uses them, which is kind of insane. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for you. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this kind of um, guide format. Uh, it's been very different to my typical like edited guides. I've just kind of been hanging out in jungle practice trying to give you guys a little bit more detail on, on like... The advanced stuff you can do and like discuss more about my builds rather than just giving you the items that i think are good trying to explain why the items are good and like counter build options and stuff like that so i can give you a bit more depth in this but uh hopefully it still captured your attention in in the same or similar way to like one of my edited guys would uh, i know it's not quite as flashy but hopefully the information was good in here and, and you've enjoyed this uh and uh, i will catch you guys in another one later on don't forget to drop a like on the video and i will catch you guys later peace